Hey, what's going on YouTube? Today we're gonna to talk about guns, gun builds, armor, rigs, backpacks, and everything that goes into making a kit in Tarkov. At various points in the wipe, uh, people will start asking, what gun should I be running? What's a good budget armor? What kind of backpack should I have? And rather than look at each individual one, which I'd like to make videos about that in the future, I prefer to look at it a little bit more holistically of what's the total value of what I'm taking into a raid and how I can you know, kind of mix and match those things based on either what map I'm going to or what situation that I plan on being in. So what I'm gonna do is break down my kits into three different tiers and kind of explain about what you're looking at price-wise and how you can mix and match and shave some rubles off. But I also wanna get into the maps and talk about how your decisions within these tiers could differ depending on what map you're going to. I am gonna break down the tiers and some of the other subjects down into to sections if you want to look at them those should be down in the description below so feel free to skip around if there's something you're looking for specifically if during these i miss any sort of really good budget builds or any armors that could be really helpful for the different tiers as i break them down please feel free to drop it down in the comments i love to hear about it and if you have any questions about anything that i've talked about please feel free to drop those down there as well or you can come by when i stream on tuesdays thursdays or saturday at twitch.tv soupchef we'd love to have you our community is very welcoming and a lot of fun and again, instead of putting this at the end of the video, I do want to take a second and just thank everybody that's subscribed and supported the channel recently. It's been incredibly humbling watching the channel grow and I can't wait to keep making videos and I'm really glad that they're helping. So let's get into it and thank you so much. All right, first let's talk about maps. We'll get into the tiers in just a second, but I do want to talk about a couple of things that I'm going to mention while I'm talking about those tiers. And that's how your map selection could really change what you're doing. For example, some of the differences that you'll see are on a map like Interchange, Reserve, uh, or Lighthouse, I'm definitely not going to skip taking a backpack. And I'm definitely not going to skip on what kind of backpack that I take. I want max amount of slots. There's loot all over these maps and you can get to it pretty quickly. So you don't want to lose valuable seconds of having to go find a backpack or go find a scav to eliminate to take their backpack and then come back for the loot. Also the rotations on the map that throws everything off. So those maps, I'm definitely gonna take a backpack into. And we'll talk about it more in the tiers list, but a map like Factory, for example, there is a lot of loot there, but everything's pretty close together. You're either gonna die pretty quickly or you're gonna be able to eliminate someone or a scav and either pick up a backpack or you're just there to quest, so you're gonna get out pretty quickly. Um, you, know, you can kind of go in there with whatever you want, um, but we'll get into it as we go through the tiers. I'll kind of talk about in some of those tiers where you can shave some rubles, where you might not want to miss some rubles and how that kind of uh, interacts with these different maps. All right, what I did for these tiers is I broke it down into different sections and that's meds, uh, meds for bleeds, armor, and that can also include armored rigs and also regular rigs, uh, headsets, a balaclava, uh, or a shattered mask, uh, guns and backpacks. I didn't really include grenades because I think that's kind of based on preference and then those can kind of differ depending on what kind of grenades you want to bring in or what you're doing questing wise. I generally bring in two different kinds of grenades. I will take in an RGDs or F1s, VOGs, it doesn't really matter. I generally don't get a lot of kills with them. I guess I'm just not very good with them, but also at the same time, they can be a little bit RNG. Um, but I do like to use them, especially since I play a lot solo to move people around the map. So I will generally always make sure that I take some because it can be really helpful when you're fighting a squad to get them to move. Um, and throughout these tiers, uh, you know, there's going to be different slots where you can save a little bit of money, where you can kind of mix and match. So the first tier, tier one, we have kits that cost zero rubles to 200k rubles. The way that I figured that out is about 20k for meds, and for that you're either looking at an IFAC or a car medical kit. Uh, 10k for bleeds is about where I put it. Uh, I know Calyx go for about 13, uh, or you can do two S marches or some cats, but either way I kind of average it out to about 10k. Um, 30k for armor, that's about what a packer cost. So that's what I put there. You could also run no armor if you wanted to. Uh, next I have 10k for a rig. That's a little bit low, but that's how much a bank robber costs. Um, you could put some slightly others i think the triton is like 29k uh the azimuth's like 39 if you want to do some extra uh slots on the map it's up to you uh, i have 25k for a headset that can be either a gssh which is about 17k or the m32s which i think are 27k from skier so i decided just to go ahead and level that out to about 25k um, 3k for a Momex or some sort of balaclava. I always like to wear one because it makes your face a little bit harder to see. Um, or you could opt for 27k for a shattered mask. Um, I run shattered masks a lot. Um, I even use them all the way up to like my tier three uh, setups that you'll see that I'll talk about. Um, 
Next, about 50K for a gun. And I'll go through a couple gun builds, but uh, that's this is where you're gonna save a lot of money compared to some of the other tiers. And then I have 23K for a backpack. And that's anything from Burkett and down. Um, I don't recommend running anything under a Burkett or I think a day pack is, is the other one that has the same amount of slots. Um, the biggest way you make money in this game, obviously, is looting. And not having a backpack to put that loot in is very bad. These tiers also don't include ammo because that's a little bit hard to account for it. And honestly, it's personal preference or where your ruble count is at. Uh, you know, for example, some people, once they unlock M62 for, you know, like the SR25s and MDRs, that's all they run. Or you could run M80 to save some rubles. Um, with this setup right here, I have Flechette. Uh, it's pretty inexpensive, but you know, some people prefer to run Buckshot or Magnum. It's kind of whatever. It's really a preference thing and whatever you feel comfortable with. So I didn't include that here. Uh, I also didn't include stuff that's in Gamma, or in my Gamma at least. I always keep my painkillers and my splints down in my Gamma, along with a sick case, my injector's case, and then either a CMS or a paracord, depends on what map I'm going to. If I'm going to reserve, I'm taking a paracord because I have a Red Rebel, and I like to go take the uh, Red Rebel Extract, so I don't have to go down to D2 if I don't want to. So for this setup here, I'm running a Bank Robber, a Burkett, a Shattered Mask, M32s, and a Paca. All this is pretty cheap. It's going to at least protect me from scavs. Um, I like running shattered masks or glasses because it keeps me from those rare one taps where you get like one pellet in your eye from a scav and you die. It kind of sucks when that happens. You know, it's a pretty big bummer. So I like to protect that if I can to not get those kind of, you know, cheesy things that happen every now and then. Um, this gun right here is a MP155. You can get this from Jaeger, I think level one. I threw a choke on it, this little thing right here, just to give a little bit more accuracy, take some of the recoil down. Um, I also paired it with Flechette. The Flechette you can craft for pretty cheap. Um, or you can just buy it off the flea market. It's not that expensive. If you have Max Jaeger, it's obviously very, very cheap. You could also run something like a Mosin that's going to be a little bit more expensive if you want to snipe instead. But you're still keeping it relatively cheap. And you could pair that with either LPS ammo or SMB. SMB is really cheap to craft. It's one red gunpowder, which is like 30k, I think. And you get 80 SMB bullets from it. One of the better ammos in the game. Uh, this, is a, this is a pretty cheap, nice little gun that you can run with that loadout. And for this, for this loadout or for this sort of tier one, you could run this in just about any map, obviously. Um, again, like I said, if you're going to woods, maybe throw a Mosin on, you're not going to have a lot of luck with people up close, but that's okay. It's a very wide open map. You can play it very differently and stay away from people. Um, you can even take a, a shotgun with you to woods. It's not that much of a big deal. This is pretty much the exact loadout that I ran when you have to eliminate scabs on woods. There's not too much to talk about here other than the backpack. Um, backpacks are something that I'm probably going to talk about a bunch throughout these tier lists. Uh, you could switch this out for a slightly bigger backpack if you wanted. If you have your traders leveled up, nothing wrong with that. More slots means more money. So I always recommend taking as big a backpack as you can. And again, for this, I would say for the tier one, uh, other than the fact that it's cheap, which is huge, especially if you're low on ruble, one of the biggest thing you can do is invest in good ammunition. A lot of these guns, even though they're not, you know, super modified or anything, uh, putting a flechette round in just even this base gun right here, you're going to one tap most scavs and you're going to be able to fight pretty much any PMC up close, especially with a semi-auto shotgun. I don't recommend using the pumps. It takes a little bit too long, but again, if you want to have fun or you just prefer pump shotguns, go for it. I do the same thing with Mosins. I like running Mosins. I like the bolt actions in this game a lot. I think they're a lot of fun and I like the challenge of using the Mosin. So I would just say, make sure you have good rounds or if you don't, it's really not a big deal, but again, just be careful and you can always find good ammo on the map too. So you can always switch it out. Another good thing about this tier one setup is that you can ensure most of this and you're probably going to get it back, especially backpacks, headsets, um, either your balaclava, your shattered masks. They're relatively cheap. They don't resell for a lot or quick sell for a lot. So you're going to get it back uh, and you're not going to have to keep spending. Uh, your, your inventory might get a little gummed up with a bunch of insurance returns, especially if you're not playing a bunch or you're not dying a bunch, which is a good thing. Not a lot of people are going to take these off the map. Some scavs might just because they're better durability guns. But for the most part, uh, you buy it once, you're probably going to be able to play with it a couple of times. All right, tier two, I'm placing somewhere between 310k rubles and 461k rubles. And how I got there is 20k for meds, kind of the same med setup as before. Got a Calic, an IFAC, uh, maybe a Salewa to make it a little bit more expensive depending on what you want to do. Um, I have 55 to 100k rubles for armor or an armored rig, and I'll run through a couple options for that going through Ragman. That's about what you're looking at when it comes to your armor and your rig. 
Uh, I have 25k for headsets. That's again for an M32 or maybe a GSSH. The headset category is a little weird because that's all a preference thing. Some people like running Swordens or maybe Comtacks, maybe even Excels. Is really a personal preference kind of thing. I personally run M32s. I've gotten used to them, so I run them a lot. But I know there are plenty of people out there that really like the GSSH, like amplification, so they can hear more on the map. Uh, that kind of depends. But I'm looking at about 25k average for what I'm talking about here. Uh, you have 3k for a Momex or 27k uh, for a shattered mask. Maybe up to 55k for a helmet. You're also looking at 133 to 208k for a gun. And I'll go through a couple of what those are. And I have 40k for a backpack, because especially in this tier is when you're going to start to really start spending a little bit more on a backpack. You're going to want to. There's no reason not to. So the kit I have here, my PMC, is a good example of a tier 2 kit. We have an M32 headset, have a shattered mask instead of a helmet, have a flora armor, uh, an ump or a UMP is my gun, I have an azimuth for my rig, a uh, tri-zip is my backpack, and then a calic and an IFAC. Again, uh, it doesn't really matter if you want to switch that out for a Salewa or an AFAC. It's really a preference kind of thing and what you're used to. I prefer trying to use one by one for my heels. That's just me personally because they fit in your pockets, leaves your rig free, and it's a little bit easier if you want to drop it. It doesn't hurt as much. So the first thing I want to talk about is my backpack. I'm running tri-zips because I finished inventory check for Ragman. But once you get into like your tier twos and your kit setups, you really want to not skimp on a backpack. If we go into Ragman and we check out the different backpacks, I mean, really the difference in price, I mean, Tri-Zip's 46, um, that Burkitt's 23. So even from there, you're only looking at a 23K increase and you can still get other backpacks like the Mechanism, uh, Switchblade, uh, Drawbridge was what I ran a lot early wipe once I unlocked them because uh, they have 25 different slots instead of 20 compared to the Burkitt and it's only 14K more ruble. So with those five slots, you just have to make up 14K ruble, which is not very much. I mean, if you find, you know, a pair of metal scissors, that'll make it up, metal make up for it. And you still have three more slots. Same thing with the T20s. I ran a lot of those in the middle of the wipe as well. Love finding them on scavs. I'll even throw them and stack them in a backpack if I'm running a PMC. Not as much anymore again, because I'm running tri-zips mostly now or switchblades. But I would highly recommend... If you have the ruble, spend the extra ruble because those extra slots, it's really easy to make up that money and then come out with even more profit. And another added benefit is if you're running with a squad, you're gonna be able to get more of their gear out. One of the biggest things that really sucks sometimes when you're running in a squad is if you have like a Burkitt, one of your homies dies and you're not able to get all their stuff out, it can be kind of a big bummer. You don't have the space. You're like, hey, I can either take your rig or your armor. Which one do you want? Um, hopefully they're insured, so you can just toss them in a bush or something like that. But at the same time, it is really nice to be able to have the option to put it on your backpack and get it out. Next thing I want to talk about is the armor. So I mentioned 55 to 100K, right? Most of these Flora armors are going to run you somewhere around 70-ish K. Um, I know these are a favorite of a lot of people uh, at this point in the wipe um, or the Thor armor. Um, but the reason why I said 55k is because this rig right here, uh, the 6B rig, that's kind of a favorite amongst a lot of people. It's a tier four. Um, it's only 55k. It's an armored rig. It's one of the things that I run a lot, especially when I go to reserve because you don't have to ditch it in order to take the red rebel extract. Um, and then the hundred K I was kind of getting up into these like TV 110s. Uh, these are level four. They're not preferred once you get into the higher tiers because it only protects your thorax but they are good for certain maps, especially. So with this too, I also mentioned with the backpacks and with some of this gear that it kind of depends on your map, right? You could probably not take a backpack to like woods, for example, because when you spawn in, you're going to run into scavs pretty quickly. The one thing that stinks is if you find some loot that you want to take out, obviously, and you're not able to find a scav, then you're gonna have to come back for it or you're gonna have to leave it, which is kind of a bummer. So I always prefer to have a backpack but there's definitely times where maybe I'm just going in to mark something. And if I happen to pick up a backpack or some loot along the way, great. And for these setups, if you want to run the tier one guns with these, perfectly fine. Not a big deal. It's really not that big of a difference. Um, but you are going to save a little bit of ruble. But honestly, I think the guns that are kind of in this tier give you a better option to survive, especially when it comes to like the UMP, right? This, this setup right here costs... 137k ruble and if you pair this with just about any ammo that you're able to run with this gun you're gonna be in pretty good shape fighting just about anything i mean if you're running into like tier 5 or tier 6 armor you're still gonna have a little bit of trouble but this setup right here is gonna be just fine especially for tasking or eliminating scavs for dailies 
running around on interchange, those kind of maps. I wouldn't recommend running it on something like Woods, for example, because it's not a very close range map. Obviously, you still very much could. It wouldn't be that big of a deal. Because again, like I said, it's not that expensive and it gives you a better option to survive than maybe a shotgun. Another option would be an RFB setup. Uh, here's an example of one that I like to run. Uh, this is going to cost you about 208K, and that's how I got about that much for a gun for this tier. Um, those are the main guns that I would recommend in this tier. Obviously, there are there are plenty more. I mean, also in this tier, you're probably going to get like some of your M4 builds. Um, you could even make some of the shotguns a little bit more lethal with some stuff on them. Uh, maybe these AK-545 builds. But you're not quite getting into that upper echelon of guns just yet. Next is tier three. And these are the top tier meta builds that you're going to see most of the time, especially mid to late game. Once you get into max traders or once you have uh, most of the traders maxed, you're going to start running some of this stuff if you want, of course, or if you just have a lot of ruble to spare. And this is going to run you about 720 to 860K. So you have 38K for a Grizzly or 50K for a Kalik plus a Salewa about. Um, that's really a preference thing. Again, Grizzlies are super helpful because they stop heavy bleeds, light bleeds, fractures. So a lot of people prefer them, especially because once you get into this sort of tier where you're spending this kind of money on your kit, really just springing for your Grizzly isn't that big of a deal. Um, also, you have about 139k for armor. I'm running a gazelle here. That's about what those cost. Of course, you can get into more expensive stuff uh, or you can get, you know, the higher tier armored rigs like the Ospreys that are going to cost you about 200k. Um, you have 45k for a rig in this specific setup right here, running a black rock. They're about 45k. Um, you have anywhere from 25 to 84k for a headset for this tier. So you have the M32s and the GSSHs that we've already talked about. Um, the other things in the middle that we've talked a little bit about, Sword and Comtax, Excels, things like that. Or 84k for the new Comtax 4 headset. Those are pretty in good world. They sound great. Uh, 3k for a balaclava, uh, 75k-ish for a helmet. Um, that's kind of on the low end with the U-Lock, or you get up into the more expensive ones like the Fast MT that I have on here, which is about 140K. And this is also not including Altons or Reese's. Those are obviously a lot more expensive, only available in Max Ragman and only for barters. So that kind of differs based on what the flea market price is or whether or not you can find this stuff. 350K plus for a gun. And that's where you're starting to get into like your MDRs, your mutants, RD704s, SR25s. A lot of these guns shoot a lot of the meta, meta ammo that's in Tarkov. I'll show a couple builds for that. So they're gonna be a little bit more expensive. And you have 46K to 110K for a backpack. And that's from going from a tri-zip, which is 46K, up to about 110K. And that's for a raid or a tree backpack, depending on what you wanna call them. And those are obviously the biggest backpacks that you can run in the game. Again, highly recommend them. Nothing wrong with running them. If you have one or a blackjack, go ahead and grab that thing, throw it on, uh, go into a raid and get as much stuff as you can out. You can get really expensive building out these meta builds. For example, I took this mutant off, an, off a PMC. I don't even have mutants unlocked, so this doesn't include the weapon price, which I think is about 130 something K. So just for the parts, that can be very expensive. Here's another example of like a meta build that I was talking about. This is how much an SR25 is gonna cost you at about meta and this is with max traders so obviously this is going to differ depending on if you have max traders um for you know the gun parts because these are going to be a little bit more expensive off the flea so again this right here is a pretty meta setup that you could run in tarkov um you could save yourself a lot of money on this certain setup depending on what you wanted to run um you could switch out the comtech fours for some m32s of course that would save you a lot of money if you don't want to run a helmet uh, run a shattered mask uh, i personally don't run helmets a lot i'll run a shattered mask um, or i'll start running u locks once i have the money or disposable income just to keep throwing one on doesn't really matter um i find that i mostly die to limb damage or head eyes anyway so i just kind of skip the helmet especially if i'm having a bad day or i just notice i'm on a bad run of raids uh, if i do pull a helmet off of somebody in a raid or i eliminate a pmc take their gear obviously i'll throw that helmet on why not not really any point in quick selling it for half the value. I'll just throw it on and take it into a raid unless I absolutely obliterated it. So the sticker shock for this price is obviously a lot, but there are a lot of things that you can do that'll cut down on this. Um, one is obviously taking gear off of PMCs. Uh, if you find some of this stuff, even if you find a gazelle that's maybe half, repair it, throw it on. There's no problem in running it if you want. It's not really that big of a deal. You could even pair it with, um, if you have like a high tier armor like a gazelle and say it's half or three quarter or something like that, you could even use it in one of those lower tiers that I was talking about because it's a better armor. It's going to protect you a little bit more. You're not really going to be able to sell it for that much. You probably don't want to take it in as your armor if you're running a really good gun. So why not just throw it on and replace like a Paco with a kind of beat up gazelle? 
but it's going to give you a better probability to survive. Uh, this setup right here would definitely be good for any map. And that's what's kind of good about those higher tier kits, right? Is you can take them to just about any map that you want to um, because you're going to have long range. Maybe you have an over under scope like I have on this one. Uh, maybe you have a nice helmet. You have more than enough room to pick loot up off the map. You can use it to quest, you can use it to PVP, whatever you're gonna do. But the easiest way to save money in this specific area is to find things obviously, or find stuff to barter for this kind of stuff if you don't wanna just straight up pay the prices for it. Obviously that's a lot. Um, if you're in end game or towards the middle of the wipe, towards end game, something like that, um, you're gonna have more than enough money to run these whenever you want to. When I go to labs, this is pretty much my lab setup, uh, except for the headwear. That'll probably differ depending on just how I'm feeling or what I have in my inventory. Another thing that I didn't really talk about is eyewear. Uh, I mentioned it briefly, but sometimes I'll throw condors on with this because I have bounced a few rounds off a of condor. It protects you from fragmentation. Uh, also, at the same time, it does protect you from those pesky shotgun pellets to the eyes. Um, so I'll throw one of those on sometimes. Also, your melee weapon. Um, that's kind of a matter of preference. I have a Red Rebel because I use it for the Red Rebel Axe tracks. I don't really use it to melee much. Um, I don't think I have that many melee kills in Tarkov, but it'd be pretty cool if I got one eventually. Uh, you, of course, if you have like, you know, the big blades or the taiga or the sword, throw it in there. They're fun. They look cool. And that's kind of, you know, that's half the battle of playing video games is just having a good time and having cool stuff. Something else that we didn't really talk about are pistols. Um, some of these, some of these builds can also differ, like, especially if you're running like a Mosin or some other bolt action, you might want to throw a pistol sidearm for close range combat for PMCs or for scavs. Of course, um, sc scavs can be really cracked and make your life really difficult. That's going to make your kits a little bit more expensive. I personally don't run them very much. I will later in the wipe when I have a little bit more money, but I kind of just roll the dice and see what happens in most of my raids, to be honest. So when I run these, uh, tier one, I'm probably almost always going to run, especially if I'm just trying to do a quest, whether it be a daily or I'm just trying to do something on a map, I'll probably throw on a tier one kit. Uh, when my main focus is just trying to get something done, whether it be mark something or eliminate scavs, go find a thing, whatever it is that they want you to do. I generally can run tier one stuff. Um, I also find it really fun. If I have a bad amount of raids, I'll throw it on because one of the things that I think is really helpful for the tier one kits is it makes you play differently, right? So if you have a bunch of bad raids in a row, maybe you make a few bad decisions and die to those decisions. I'll throw in a tier one kit because it just makes me play differently. If I have a shotgun, it makes me play more aggressively. If I'm running like a Mosin, I have to be really thoughtful with my shots. I have to move around the map with a little bit more intent you know what i mean so like those kits can be really helpful not only to save ruble but also to kind of get you out of a bad mindset um tiers two stuff is about where i live for the most part um once i get into later in the game once i've completely maxed out my traders so once i hit level 42 i'll kind of move into those tier three um, anytime i go to labs i'll probably run something in that category but also for the most part there are points in the wipe where you're kind of forced to run certain gear and also certain guns so i kind of miss the middle part i've noticed um i'll run rfbs or i do run a lot of umps i've run a lot of umps just because they're really powerful there's no reason not to at a certain point uh, but since you have to run certain guns for like Punisher and Tarkov Shooter, um, I find myself just kind of living in that tier two when it comes to you know, like the rigs and the armor and stuff like that. And the gun kind of takes care of itself because you have to run certain stuff anyway. Um, but then once I get into being able to run whatever I want, I'll kind of move into the, the tier three. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that it helped. Like I said, instead of just doing a thing where it's like, hey, run these guns at this point in the wipe, I kind of want to tell you a little bit about like the my mindset and how I look at things in a little bit of a bigger sense. I really would like to do more of like gun build videos or like a tier list at some point. Um, but I did want to get this out there because I think it's important, especially as we're kind of like approaching the midpoint of the wipe. If the video did help, of course, we'd appreciate a subscription. We'd love for you to keep following along with the channel. Um, I'm really excited for the direction that we're going. And uh, yeah, thank you so much to everybody again. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.